Anthony, you're a cosmologist. You study the universe, how it began, what's going to happen in the future, multiple universes, the multiverse through various uh, mechanisms that, that are created. But when you stop back and you think of the ultimate question, uh, why is there anything at all? Why, why is there something rather than nothing? Uh, where would you as a cosmologist begin to think about that? I think this question of whether there's something rather than nothing is, it, it's one of those amusing things where we, we think one side of the question's easy and the other, the other one's hard, but I think it's the reverse. So the universe is this complicated place, fields, gravity, everything. We think that's the hard part and that nothing is really simple yeah. and it's really easy to define. It's yeah. just nothing. Yeah. But I think the real challenge here is what do you really mean by nothing? And there are some versions of nothing that are pretty simple although sophisticated, like the, the vacuum in quantum mechanics or quantum field theory, which are the vacuum, there's no, no things there, there's no particles, but we know that particles are really excitations of fields and the fields are still there, you can't get rid of them. So, so if you have a, a vacuum in quantum field theory, it's full of fields, you know, it's nothing, mm -hmm. but it's full of fields. What and kind I, of fields? Well, for example, the electromagnetic field. If, you, right. if there's an electron in this region, you know, and suppose I take away all the electrons and all the protons and so on, I've taken all the particles out, but the electromagnetic field is still there. It's got some value. Um, so you can't get rid of the fields. They're continuous things. I can't make a hole in one of them and yeah. get rid of it. So that sort of nothing already has a whole lot of stuff in it. So then we have to come up with more, if we want to think about less nothing we, you right. know we have to come up with how do you do that and and they're they're interesting once you bring in general relativity they're, they're the theory of space time gives you new ways of thinking about nothing an interesting thing that you can write down theoretically is called a bubble of nothing where essentially space time comes into where this bubble is and then it kind of loops back and mm. wraps around mm. so as long as you're in space time you just kind of go toward this thing and then you come back you can't ever get into this area, but it's a hole. You can sort of see that it's there, but you can't ever get into it. And there's nothing there. Not even space or time. There's not even space time there. But what is there? You can define mathematically this bubble of nothing. Another version of nothing that people have thought about is, is the universe coming from nothing. And the trick here is to, to think of nothing as, well, let's take a universe and let's make it smaller and let's make it smaller. And now let's make it zero size and call that nothing. And then you try to describe a process where a zero size universe turns into a finite size universe and you call that coming from nothing. But it's pretty clear that that nothing that you started with had a whole lot in it because it was, it was strictly a mathematical limit of a perfectly well-defined, full, rich universe. And I think in sort of a deeper level, it's, it's almost impossible to sort of conceptually define what we mean by nothing. That, there was this beautiful essay by Henri Bergson, one of my favorite philosophers. He was a 19th, late 19th century philosopher, and, and he wrote about this. And, and the gist of it, as I remember, and I, I've been thinking about it over the years, is that you know, whenever we conceptually think about nothing, we do it by taking something away. Take this away, take that away. But there's always something sort of left there that we've left in its place. We take something out and we left mm. space. We've taken space out and we left these apparatuses. And he argued that you, it, it's almost a self-refuting concept when you try to really think of nothing. That you, you're to, to really think of nothing, you also have to remove all of your mm -hmm. mental apparatus, all of your thoughts and ideas and con concepts and so on, which are all something. And as you take those away, either you replace them with something else or you sort of can't continue the process. So it, I think nothing is a fascinating topic that uh, requires both the physics side and I think it really requires insight from sort of philosophical thinking, because it, it's ultimately a, a sort of philosophical question, and, and maybe the marriage between those two in a careful way could, could shed a little more light.